Okay, guys, so in this last unit, we'll get into uh, ventricular uh, dysrhythmias and ventricular beats. So like we mentioned, when the ventricles are controlled by structures above the ventricles, either in the atria, the junctional tissues, or normally the SA node, um, the QRS complexes are narrow and normal looking. Anytime that we see wide, weird looking QRS complexes, those originated in the ventricles, right? Um, that did not start some start, you know, above above the ventricles that started in the ventricles. And sometimes um, we can have situations where the ventricles spontaneously discharge um, because there's an ectopic pacemaker that originates in the ventricles. Uh, this can be caused for a, a myriad of different, of different reasons. Sometimes it's ischemia. Sometimes it's a little bit of uh, inflammation to the heart potentially as well too, um, or anything that's going to disrupt membrane potentials or you know, maybe there's an, you know, just a, there's an ectopic pacemaker located in the ventricles. But um, again, and there are a lot of different reasons for PVCs. Um, honestly, if you drink a lot of caffeine or if you if you wake up sick, you can you can, you'll throw a couple. It's not super concerning unless you start throwing them more routinely or more than six per minute. That's when we start getting a little bit more a little bit more concerning. Anytime we start seeing more than six PVCs per minute. Per minute. That's when we start getting a little bit more concerned because um, a PVC again is the ventriculars, a ventricles depolarizing and contracting um, out of rhythm. And again, anytime we throw a wrench into that rhythm or the regularity of that rhythm, we mess up filling and contracting. Right, that electrical mechanical coupling. We lose myocardial pumping performance. So a PVC. Uh, again, it's just a wide, weird-looking QRS complex or ventricular beat that occurs kind of out of out of rhythm. So if you look at this, you know this ECG tracing, everything here looks kind of normal um, underlying, right? So we see a normal-looking P wave, a normal-looking QRS complex. Let's do a quick, you know, assessment. So one, two, three. So this is you know within a normal range for heart rate. Uh, PR interval looks pretty normal. T, you know, ST segment looks pretty normal. T, T wave looks pretty normal. Everything checks out. Then we see this weird looking wave. And like, what is this? This is a PVC, a wide, weird ventricular beat. Um, what you might experience if you're a patient or, you know, as a clinician, you would experience a, a skipped beat here uh, potentially because um, this is a you know, depolarization often leading to a contraction. Um, that is out of rhythm. Maybe there's no effective filling, and there's no there's no pressure wave produced downstream. Um, and patients may feel like their heart skipped a beat. That's what a PVC sort of feels like. Um, now, what we also see, we see another one um, here, right? So you may be wondering what is going on here. Like why we see two PVCs? There's one here. There's one here, but they look different. Now, um, sometimes you can have PVCs that look exactly the same. We'll show you some examples of that later on. We would call that a monomorphic or one morph, one type, um, which means there's just one type of waveform. Um, and then there can be um, polymorphic or multifocal, um, where you've got two different types of waveforms, um, unifocal or um, when we have a, a single morphology means that there's just one location of ectopy. When we have multifocal um, PVCs means there's at least two different locations because, um, again, ECG is looking at electrical activity. This is a, an ECG or a PVC produced by two different locations. And we have, you know, different looking waveforms. So, again, uh, multifocal, meaning there are two foci or locations of ectopy, and we, we make that assessment because we see two PVCs, but they have two very different morphologies. Their waves look different. Um, they're both irregular and wide, but they look different in, in shape and um, in, in kind of structure. Um, 
Now there um, are other patterns too. Sometimes you can just have a random PVC or you know, you know, a couple per minute spaced out between each other. But there are some situations where you see them occur in a repeated fashion. This is an example of ventricular bigeminy, where we've got a PVC every second beat. So you got normal looking beat, PVC, normal looking beat, PVC, normal looking beat, PVC, bigeminy, every second beat. And these would be an example of monomorphic PVCs because again, there is just a singular morphology of the PVCs. And then there is ventricular trigeminy, right? So every third beat, tri, three, gemini are, gen are generated. So um, we've got one, two, three PVC, or you know, our third beat PVC, one, two, PVC, one, two, PVC. So again, every third beat, there's a PVC. And again, this would be another example of a uh, monomorphic. And then we've got ventricular quadrigemony, right? So every fourth beat, there is a PVC. So one, two, three, PVC, one, two, three, PVC. So every fourth beat, there is a dropout. Now, obviously, as like we, we mentioned, the more PVCs you, you throw per minute, the more concerning things are. Um, you know, so even, you know, though, you know, all of these are kind of concerning, quadrigemony, trigemony, and bigemony, bigemony would probably be the most concerning because you're, you're having them every other beat. So in, in, a, in, a, in a minute, you know, say this was happening every, you know, every second or so, you're having 30 PVCs per minute. Like, that's concerning. Um, and uh, this example here in quadrigemony, this would be another example of a, of a multifocal, right, where we've got that multiple different types of variants uh, or morphologies of those um, PVCs. Reason why, um, you know, uh, bigeminies are concerning because they can quickly become, or really any PVC, you know, um, can quickly become a couplet. That's where you've got two PVCs back to back. So not only do we have one skipped beat, we have two skipped beats, right? Or two, you know, an increasing amount of ectopy, an increasing amount of irregularity. So you got two, two couplets in a row. Um, uh, now, generally, um, you know, with this, a couplet, um, or if someone goes into any of those you know, trigeminy, bigeminy, or uh, quadrigeminy, you're, you're going to stop, assess, making sure they don't go into something a little bit even more concerning. We'll get into that. Uh, but a couplet, again, back-to-back -back PVCs, that's concerning because, again, every PVC means there is not an effective pump, potentially, and they may not be able to perfuse their organs, including their brain, but also including the heart itself um, as well. And then there is ventricular tachycardia. So VTAC is when we have three or more PVCs in a row or th three or more ventricular beats, which are wide, weird-looking QRS complexes without a preceding P wave. So here, again, you know, these are wide, weird complexes, and we call it ventricular tachycardia because they're moving pretty quickly. If you remember our little, um, you know, just, you know, just math, so 300, 150, this is moving close to about 150 beats per minute. And again, if you look at what the underlying rate was, just look at this here, right? The rate for this guy roughly is, let's call it three, 150. We're going to do this uh, Three, 150, 100, 75. Yeah, the, the beat for this is close to 60 beats per minute, running pretty slow and then spontaneously goes to 150 beats per minute out of, out of, out of the blue. Um, patients like this may feel like their heart's fluttering. They may pass out because of, again, if we, if we, you know, jump the speed of contraction almost twice or double than it was normally at rest, there's no way we're going to adequately fill, um, you know, in time, potentially, you're going to pass out, um, cause we can't get blood effectively to the brain or even to the heart itself. Um, now sometimes people can go into a run event, a VTAC where they've got, just maybe a one, two, three, four, five run, you know, uh, beat of it. Again, VTAC is technically anything, any three or more PVCs in a row is technically VTAC. 
because again, two is just a couplet, three or more is ZTAC. Um, and we would call that, again, if it's short-lived or less than 30 seconds of being in VTAC, we would call that non-sustained VTAC. And sometimes people will go in these five-beat runs of VTAC, um, you know, where it'll, you know, move in and out. There can be examples, though, where people are in, su are in sustained VTAC. So this would be an example of the tracing. This is obviously only six seconds of this, tr of this you know, minute tracing, but this person was in VTAC uh, for longer than 30 seconds, right? They stayed in VTAC. And again, in this example, they may be pulseless because again, when you're beating out of coordination, you're beating really fast, especially at rest, which was these things typically, you know, happen, or even during exercise, like, you know, this, look at this rate. This is, this is over, this is over 200 beats per minute. Like this is incredibly fast. Um, and that's not sustainable. So, um, and these individuals, maybe they randomly get some filling and get some blood out, but odds are they aren't because the heart's just beating a mile a minute, right? It's sustained VTAC. And again, like if we don't have adequate filling and pumping, not only are we not perfusing our brain and other organs, we're also not perfusing our heart. And with the heart pumping this quickly, right, it's raising the demand on the heart as well because the heart's beating a mile a minute decreasing the time as well, even for perfusion, even if we were able to get some blood out, um, potentially, there's not enough time to perfuse. Remember, we perfuse the heart during diastole. We don't do it during systole. So if we're, if we're decreasing that time in diastole, we're really putting, um, putting some strain in the heart, especially if we can't get adequate perfusion or, or, or uh, stroke volume to perfuse the heart. And then uh, this could quickly deteriorate into ventricular fibrillation. So going back to remember that atrial fibrillation, we said we see that writhing and wiggling basically of the atria, which we call fibrillation. This is what we see happening in the ventricles. The ventricles are now in ventricular fibrillation, writhing like worms, right? There is no contraction. So again, VTAC, it's very quick, 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 quick contractions. V-fib, we move to fibrillation. There is no contraction. The ventricles are quivering, right? There's no blood pump being pumped, no pumping at all. These patients will almost never have a, will never have a pulse because there's no downstream pressure wave produced because the, the ventricles aren't contracting. There is so much ectopy, so much instability in those member, membrane potentials. Um, and you end up getting this just very weird, you know, these fibrillating waves. Um, so again, uh, this, this is a situation where death is pretty imminent because there's no perfusion. Um, this is the, when we talk about like wanting you know, to call it code blue, this is that example. Patients in VFib, never conscious. Patients in VTAC, um, so same VTAC are almost never conscious. So they're absolutely in VFib. And this is what often many people go into um, at the end of a heart attack or any um, you know preceding dysrhythmia um, we'll go into VFib. Um, and again, this is a dire situation um, because there is no pumping of blood downstream at all, even to the heart itself. And the only way to get someone out of VFib is to defibrillate them. That's why you see those AEDs, right, like are such an important thing. Um, there are two different types. There are coarse VFib where the waves are very large. This would be an example of coarse VFib. And then there are there is fine VFib where you've got uh, smaller waves, um, but it's still differentiated from uh, asystole because there's still some activity on here. Now, um, we'll, we'll, you may hear a term called PEA if you're looking through a chart. That stands for pulseless electrical activity. This VFib sustained VTAC, potentially even a, a complete heart block, those are situations where you might not feel a pulse. You will never feel a pulse in VFib because there's just no pumping of the, of the heart whatsoever. But if we hooked them up to an ECG, we would see still see electrical activity from the fibrillation um, that's, that's occurring, but there's no pulse. So that's pulseless electrical activity. And again, the criteria again for VFib, it's, it's chaotic, there's no heart rate because you can't, there's, there's no contraction at all, no, no, no real conduction. Um, there's not even real QRS complexes. Uh, there's no P waves. There's 
no PR interval, and you see these fibrillation waves. And then there's uh, torch status to points or wandering point, uh, wandering, oops, wandering points. This is a type of um, of a, a type of VTAC in a certain sense. It's thrown in, in the categories of VFib2, where you see these wandering points. Um, gives it, it's a it's just a twisting of the QRS complex around the isoelectric line. This is a hemodynamic emergency. This also presents very similarly to sustained VTAC or VFib. Uh, this is often what happens with long QT intervals, um, often due to hypomagnesia, um, which again, it, it predisposes the individuals to having some uh, ventricular beat or depolarization occur or an ectopic pacemaker, you know, enter into that, that relative repolarization, sending the heart into this kind of, uh, this, this, this sustained VTAC variant in a certain sense. Some people even throw it as a, as a VFib uh, variant, but either way, it's still, uh, this is a medical emergency as well. And then there is uh, asystole, right? So asystole is um, no beat, right? So A meaning absent, systole, and that's, I have A, A stole. It should be asystole, apologies, a systole, a systole, um, or flat line where there is there's nothing, right? So a meaning absent, systole meaning beating. There is uh, no contraction whatsoever um, of the heart, no electrical activity at all. Um, now, interestingly, you'll see on a lot of like medical dramas, people will shock people that are in asystole, the heart goes beep. You actually don't do that in, um, in, in emergency rooms anymore because uh, it, in order for that to work, you need to have some sort of electrical activity. In that situation, you'd probably still just do CPR um, and, and hopefully some of the medications you'll give will work. Uh, but yeah, asystole, you're basically just barbecuing the heart if you're shocking it in that certain sense. It's, it's not effective. And then uh, ventricular pacemakers. So there are patients, again, if they have really bad, you know, uh, AV node blocks or dysrhythmias of some kind, they may be given a pacemaker to set the pace for the heart, allow a machine to control the rhythm and rate. And what you'll see in these patients is um, these vertical lines followed by a wide QRS complex. Let's go to our rhythm strip here on the bottom. Again, to give us a, a six second view. Looking at uh, lead two again, we often use lead two because it gives you that best bang for its buck because it gives you that you know in line with the mean vector. But two vertical lines followed by a wide QRS and then repeated in that pattern. This is because the vertical lines come from the shock sent from the um, pacemaker. If you see two, it's usually a biventricular pacemaker, so we're getting right and left, and then you get a. Um, uh, QRS complex. The reason why it's wide because we're bypassing the the atrial structures and we're going directly just to the ventricles. Again, anything that originates in the ventricles, right, or anything that doesn't originate in the atria in terms of ventricular beats, it's going to be wide. So we're, we've cut out the atria completely and we're directly stimulating the ventricles. That's why the QRS complex is wider. So that is a ventricular pacemaker. That is ventricular beats in a nutshell. And then uh, the last section you guys will have will be on uh, ischemic changes.